According to Reuters, Pakistan has conducted strikes inside Iran targeting Baluchi militants, a senior intelligence official told Reuters on Thursday, two days after Iran conducted strikes inside Pakistani territory. There was no official confirmation of the strikes by Pakistani officials, but Iranian media said several missiles hit a village in the Sistan Baluchistan province that orders Pakistan and that three women and four children, all non-Iranians, were killed. According to Reuters, Taiwan's Foxconn will partner with tech firm HCL Group for a semiconductor assembly and testing facility in India, the companies said on Thursday. The firms will set up an outsourced assembly and testing unit in the South Asian nation. According to Reuters, China stocks extended the decline on Thursday, down to their lowest level in nearly five years, as China's patchy economic recovery and the prospect of limited stimulus kept investors away from riskier assets. China's blue chip CSI 300 index dropped 0.6%, its lowest level since early 2019, while the Shanghai Composite Index lost 1.6% by midday. Hong Kong shares stabilized from Wednesday's sell off. According to Bloomberg, oil steadied as traders weighed heightened tensions in the Middle East, including another vessel attack near Yemen, and mixed signals on U.S. crude and product stockpiles. West Texas Intermediate held below $73 a barrel, after ending modestly higher on Wednesday, while Brent was near $78. Tensions remain high in the Middle East as Iran-backed Houthi militants threaten shipping in the waters off Yemen. That's cut vessel passages through the Red Sea, snarling trade flows. According to Reuters, two of Europe's leading energy transition investors plan to raise 500 million euros for a battery raw materials fund, aiming to plug significant gaps in the region's supply chain, executives told Reuters. Inno Energy, backed by the European Union, and Demeter Investment Managers said the EBA Strategic Battery Materials Fund would focus its efforts on critical minerals including lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese and graphite. According to Reuters, Vietnam's legislature on Thursday approved new rules that lower the maximum stake investors can hold in domestic banks, a move aimed at reducing risks of market manipulation, but that could make investment in lenders less attractive. Under the reform, which will take effect from July this year, institutional shareholders, such as investment or pension funds, will be allowed to hold up to 10% of a bank's equity, down from the current 15% limit. According to Bloomberg, Asian equities were mixed Thursday, with China extending a drop, after strong U.S. retail sales data cast fresh doubt on the likelihood of a Federal Reserve rate cut in March. Stocks in mainland China retreated, with the Shanghai Composite Index slipping below 2,800 to the lowest since 2020. The heavy selling in the world's second-largest economy followed underwhelming economic reports and signs from Premier Li Chang that authorities will avoid huge stimulus to revive growth. According to Bloomberg, European central bank officials who until recently had been wary of even discussing interest rate cuts now look increasingly open to commencing them in June. Speaking this week in Davos, President Christine Lagarde and several of her colleagues dismissed investor bets on reductions before then. But they signaled the chance of a move around mid-year, when they'll know more about inflation, wages and the stuttering economy, as well as the harm to supply chains by Yemen's Houthi rebels. According to Reuters, India's Akasa Air on Thursday announced an order for 150 Boeing 737 MAX narrowbody planes for expanding its domestic and international operations, as the budget carrier tries to cash in on the expansion in the world's fastest-growing aviation market. This is the first major order announcement for Boeing's troubled MAX jetliner program since a mid-air cabin panel blowout this month. According to Bloomberg, the Pakistani military carried out targeted strikes against militant hideouts in Iran after Tehran launched similar attacks the day before, in an escalation of tensions. The nuclear-armed nation carried out the morning strikes against terrorist hideouts in Iran's Sistan and Baluchistan province, Pakistan's foreign ministry said in a statement. A number of militants were killed, it added. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co.'s net income fell less than expected in another sign that a chip industry downturn may have bottomed out. Xinchu-based TSMC, the main chipmaker to Apple Inc. and NVIDIA Corp., reported net income for the fourth quarter of 238.7 billion new Taiwan dollars, 
beating the average analyst estimate of 224.1 billion new Taiwan dollars. According to Reuters, Japanese policymakers searching for clues on whether wage hikes will become widespread may find relief in a central bank survey in the northern prefecture of Aomori, which showed a majority of firms planning wage hikes similar or higher than last year. While some major companies based in big cities like Tokyo have signaled bold wage hikes, the Bank of Japan has said it needs to scrutinize whether pay rises will spread to smaller firms in regional areas, before raising interest rates. According to Bloomberg, Israel's central bank governor backed a new cabinet-approved budget this week, saying it will deliver enough of a fiscal adjustment to stabilize debt despite the heavy cost of the war against Hamas. In his first comments since the budget won the backing of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet this week, Bank of Israel's Amir Yarin gave his support to efforts to keep public debt at about 66% of gross domestic product in coming years, compared with 62% in 2023. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. launched another round of strikes at 14 Houthi targets in Yemen overnight as the militant group's attacks on shipping in the Red Sea continue, according to U.S. officials. It wasn't immediately clear how extensive the damage was or whether there were casualties in the latest American response to repeated Houthi attacks against commercial shipping. According to Reuters, Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC posted a 19% fall in fourth quarter net profit on Thursday as global economic woes hit demand for chips used in applications from cars to cell phones and servers. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing County Limited, the world's largest contract chipmaker and a major Apple Inc. and Nvidia supplier, saw October to December net profit drop to 238.7 billion Tongan Pahingas from 295.9 billion Tongan Pahingas a year earlier. According to Reuters, Cartier jewelry owner Richemont reported a 4% in sales during its third quarter on Thursday, as the world's second-largest luxury group became the latest company in the sector to post a slowdown in demand. Sales rose to 5.59 billion euros in the three months to the end of December, said the company that also owns Swiss watchmakers Jaeger Le Coultre, IWC and Piaget. According to Reuters, Weather-related disruptions at ports in northern Europe and the diversion of vessels away from the Red Sea are causing increased yard density at container terminals, AP Mahler Maersk said in an update to customers on Thursday. Maersk and other shipping groups have diverted vessels away from the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden following attacks by Yemen's Houthis, sending them on a long journey around the Cape of Good Hope rather than through the Suez Canal shortcut. According to Reuters, Workers in Europe are hoping this year's pay round will help restore incomes eroded by higher prices, but the expected boost to their purchasing power could hamper the European Central Bank's efforts to bring inflation back to target. The ECB has singled out wages as the single biggest risk to its one minus one half year crusade against inflation. It expects salary growth across the eurozone of 4.6% this year, far more than the 3% pace it considers consistent with inflation at its 2% target. According to Reuters, the rerouting of a growing number of ships around Africa to avoid potential attacks in the Red Sea is altering refueling patterns and boosting demand for bunker fuel at far-flung ports, from the Mauritius to South Africa to the Canary Islands. Ships are also expected to top up more at Singapore and Rotterdam, the two busiest bunkering ports and where fuel is competitively priced, as they try to hedge against uncertainty over route changes, traders and analysts said. According to Bloomberg, French President Emmanuel Macron backed the issuance of joint European debt to pay for priorities including defense and technology in order to ensure Europe remains sovereign amid increasing competition with China in the US. We need more public investment in Europe, so we should open a second phase of reinvestment as we did during the Covid crisis, and maybe daring again to have eurobonds for priorities, Macron said, addressing the World Economic Forum in Davos. According to Reuters, an excavator belches out fumes as it clears earth and rubble from between the train and bus stations in the Ukrainian town of Troschenets to make way for a reimagined transport hub. Badly damaged in fighting with Russian forces almost two years ago, Troschenets is one of six settlements being rebuilt with state funds in a pilot program to develop the skills and experience needed for a far broader reconstruction drive later. According to Reuters, Sylvia Sherwood believes it is time for a change of government in Britain at this year's election, 
saying an economy that forces cash-strapped elderly women to seek warmth in shops needs to be fixed. In an era of deep divisions in Britain, voters like Sherwood are becoming some of the best predictors of who will win the election, living in a town where results have aligned with the national vote in every national election since 1964 the longest consecutive record. According to Reuters, Global Infrastructure Partners is in talks to buy up to a 49% stake in MMC Port Holdings, in a deal potentially valuing Malaysia's biggest port operator at around 30 billion ringgit, two sources with knowledge of the matter said. The infrastructure investor has begun seeking financing for the potential acquisition of a stake in MMC Port, part of the MMC Corp conglomerate controlled by Malaysian tycoon Syed Mokhtar al-Bukhari, one of the sources said. According to Reuters, Asian shares struggled to make headway on Thursday, weighed down by a murky economic outlook in China and expectations the global rate easing cycle may not come as early as some had initially thought. Chinese stocks plumbed multi-year lows as the dour mood over China's shaky economic recovery extended into a second day, while an escalation of geopolitical tensions also kept markets on edge. According to Reuters, India hasn't made up its mind on cutting import taxes on electric vehicles under a new policy proposed for carmakers that commit to local manufacturing and that could ease Tesla's entry into the market, a top government official said. India's domestic automakers are concerned about the possibility of Tesla entering the market, and government plans to give incentives to Tesla and other global carmakers. India has been working on a proposed policy to slash a 100% EV import tax to as low as 15% for automakers that commit to investing and manufacturing in India eventually. According to Reuters, a large U.S. investment bank is considering building up a 10% stake in Italy's Banca Popolare di Sandrio, Il Sol 24 or newspaper reported on Thursday, without citing sources or naming the investor. The move would also pave the way for the entry of Unicredit in the group's shareholding, the newspaper said, without giving further details and adding that Unicredit declined to comment. According to Bloomberg, Europe's automakers are bracing for slower growth this year after sales fell for the first time in 17 months in December on waning enthusiasm for electric vehicles. New vehicle registrations declined 3.8% to 1.05 million units last month the European Automobile Manufacturers Association said Thursday. Sales slumped nearly a quarter in the region's biggest market Germany after EV incentives ran out, outweighing growth in other key countries. According to Reuters, disruptions to scheduled exports of U.S. liquefied natural gas at export plants in Louisiana and Texas tightened some supply temporarily as the U.S. contends with an Arctic blast, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. The Cameron LNG export plant in Louisiana canceled at least one scheduled shipment while several other planned deliveries from Cameron and Chenier Energy's Corpus Christi facility in Texas were also delayed, the report said, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Bloomberg, the Chinese petrochemical sector's bet on profiting from a steady supply of cheap U.S. gas to make plastics is quickly going awry, as twin choke points for shipping upend trade flows and drive up costs. China has invested heavily in its Pechums industry in recent times. But the massive expansion in capacity accelerated last year just as the Chinese economy was stuttering, slowing consumption and creating a glut of plastics across Asia. A large proportion of the new plants use propane, which is mostly imported from the U.S. According to Reuters, Online betting giant Flutter posted a 15% rise in fourth quarter revenue on Thursday but said growth of 26% in its FanDuel US business was below expectations due to a series of very friendly customer results. The world's largest online betting company said in November that it expected full-year earnings excluding the nascent US market of £1.44 billion, the bottom of its previously forecast range following a similar run of results in Europe. According to Bloomberg, Fermat Capital Management just had the best year in its more than two-decade history, after outsized bets on catastrophe bonds delivered record results. The hedge fund's returns were, in line, with the 20% gain in the Swiss Re Global Cat Bond Performance Index, according to Brett Houghton, a managing director at Fermat, which looks after about $10.8 billion of assets. According to Reuters, the European Union reached a provisional deal on Thursday to improve how national authorities work with each other to combat money laundering, including in the crypto sector. 
representatives of EU states and the European Parliament reached the deal in negotiations that concluded in the early hours of Thursday, aiming to end the current differing national approaches to fighting money laundering. According to Yahoo Finance, green shoots are back on Wall Street. But executives are being more careful about saying so this time around. Collectively five of the biggest banks saw investment banking revenues climb 3.5% in the fourth quarter from the same year ago period, thanks largely to stock and bond underwriting as opposed to advising on mergers and acquisitions. According to Bloomberg, Chinese equity benchmarks rebounded in afternoon trading with a jump in turnover in some major exchange-traded funds raising speculation that buying by state funds may be behind the reversal. Traded value of the Watai Pinebridge CSI 300 ETF surged to 15.3 billion yuan on Thursday, the highest since 2015, while those for Harvest CSI 300 Index ETF and E-Fund CSI 300 ETF also jumped. That coincided with gains in the CSI 300 benchmark of mainland shares, which closed 1.4% higher after declining as much as 1.8%. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble opened up slightly on Thursday around the 88 to the dollar mark, held up by the traditional low demand for foreign exchange among Russian importers at the start of the year. At 0730 GMT the ruble was 0.35% stronger against the dollar at 88.63 and had gained 0.13% to trade at 96.62 versus the euro. It had shed 0.25% against the yuan to 12.25. According to Reuters, Citigroups is planning to lay off around 20 equity researchers in Asia Pacific as part of its global overhaul, a person with direct knowledge of the matter said. Two researchers in Hong Kong are going to be impacted with the rest of the headcount reduction likely to take place in Japan, Australia and Korea, the person said. According to Reuters, heavy snowfall and icy conditions appended air, car and train travel across Germany for a second day on Thursday. At Frankfurt Airport, Germany's largest hub, more than 300 out of almost 1,000 planned arrivals and departures were cancelled in the morning, according to a spokesperson. According to Reuters, struggling British music investor Hypnosis Songs Fund said on Thursday it had called for an extraordinary shareholder meeting to vote on a special resolution that could help the company draw potential bidders. Hypnosis Board is proposing to amend the articles of the company to enshrine the payment of a fee of up to £20 million, as a form of cost protection, to prospective offerers, according to the fund. According to Bloomberg, Japan equities are rapidly recovering the ground they lost to their Chinese peers in the early years of the pandemic as global investors continue to seek alternatives to the world's second biggest economy. The gap between the market capitalization of mainland China and Japan has shrunk to $2.7 trillion, the smallest since July 2020, data compiled by Bloomberg Show. The last time Japan commanded a higher value than China was in early 2019. According to Bloomberg, after a politics-heavy couple of days dominated by the wars in Ukraine and Gaza as well as Donald Trump's presidential campaign, the focus shifts to finance on day four of the World Economic Forum in Davos. Highlights Thursday include a panel on uniting European markets with European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde and Deutsche Bank CEO Christian Sewing. We also have Bloomberg TV interviews with the heads of Barclays, Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. Blackstone founder Steve Schwartzman and German finance minister Christian Lindner. According to Bloomberg, Rishi Sunak's signature plan to deport asylum seekers survived a key vote in parliament, but not before the British prime minister suffered a series of blows to his authority that damaged his hopes of avoiding defeat at a general election later this year. The House of Commons voted 320 to 276 on Wednesday in favor of Sunak's plan to send migrants to Rwanda after most Conservative Party rebels who had tried to force the government to toughen the bill fell into line rather than risk triggering political turmoil. Only 11 Tory MPs ultimately voted against Sunak. The legislation now advances to the House of Lords, where it is expected to face stiff opposition because the Tories don't have a majority in the upper chamber. According to Bloomberg, S. Icewaran, the Singapore transport minister who resigned after facing graft charges, was in public service for more than a quarter of a century. It took just months for his storied career to unravel. The 61-year-old Icewaran, 
who helped bring Formula One racing to Singapore and represented the city-state at the World Economic Forum, was charged Thursday with two counts of corruption, 24 counts of obtaining valuable things from someone he had business dealings with as a public servant, and one for obstructing justice. According to Reuters, Japan aims to become the fifth country to put a spacecraft on the moon when it attempts the precision landing of the smart lander for investigating moon probe on Friday. Dubbed the moon sniper, SLIM will put to the test an experimental technology the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency says is unprecedented and essential to searching for water, and other factors that could sustain life on the moon. According to Reuters, government bond investors were on hold on Thursday, with the Eurozone yields well supported close to their highest levels in around one month in a data light session and as the European Central Bank enters its quiet period before next week's meeting. Money markets scaled back their bets on rate cuts in the first half of 2024 on Wednesday after remarks from ECB officials and solid economic and inflation figures. According to Bloomberg, Pakistan's stocks slid the most in Asia and dollar bonds weakened after the South Asian nation retaliated against Iran with missile strikes against militant hideouts, stoking investor concern over the escalating tensions. The benchmark KSE 100 index tumbled as much as 1.6% on Thursday, before pairing its loss to about 0.8%. The nation's dollar bonds were the worst performers in emerging markets on the day, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. The Pakistan rupee was little changed. According to Reuters, the Eurozone's current account surplus declined in November on lower primary income, which typically includes the flow of profits, wages, interest income and dividends into and out of the bloc, data from the European Central Bank showed on Thursday. Based on calendar and seasonally adjusted figures, the surplus eased to 24.6 billion euros from 32.3 billion euros a month earlier while the unadjusted figure slipped to 31.7 billion euros from 28.4 billion euros. According to Reuters, an escalation of geopolitical tensions between Pakistan and neighboring Iran on Thursday has sent shockwaves through Pakistan's struggling economy, roiling its dollar bonds and hitting its stock market. Pakistan conducted strikes inside Iran, targeting separatist Baloch militants two days after Tehran said it had attacked the bases of another group within Pakistani territory. According to Reuters, European shares edged higher on Thursday, following three straight sessions of losses, lifted by Richemont and Flutter's upbeat results, while investors awaited release of the European Central Bank's policy meeting minutes due later in the day. The Pan-European Stocks 600 Index edged 0.1% higher by 0917 GMT, after falling to a six-week low in the previous session. According to Reuters, European stocks rose in early trading on Thursday, recovering after traders lowered their expectations for major central banks to start cutting interest rates soon. A combination of higher-than-expected UK inflation data and US retail sales data, as well as hawkish comments from European central bank officials, pushed European and US stocks lower on Wednesday, as traders scaled back their expectations for rate cuts. According to Reuters, Russia said on Thursday it was impossible to discuss nuclear arms control with the United States without taking into account the situation in Ukraine, accusing Washington of seeking military dominance. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov told a news conference that Washington had proposed separating the two issues and resuming strategic stability, talks between the two countries, which hold by far the world's biggest nuclear arsenals. According to Reuters, U.S. chipmaker Intel's fight against a 1.06 billion euro EU antitrust fine was boosted on Thursday by an advisor to Europe's top court finding EU regulators at fault on their economic analysis. The court should confirm that the commission erred in applying the AEC test with respect to HP and Lenovo, said Leila Medina, advocate general at the Luxembourg-based Court of Justice of the European Union. According to Bloomberg, Birkenstock holding PLC's first earnings report as a public company is ripe for volatility as investors gauge whether the negative reaction to its 2023 initial public offering was overdone. The Neustadt, Germany-based Sandalmaker will report results before the U.S. stock market opens Thursday, following a rally across equity markets lifted shares back above their IPO price in the wake of an underwhelming debut. According to Reuters, 
Norwegian industrial software firm Cognite expects to become cash flow positive in 2024 and could list its shares in New York in the coming years, possibly as early as 2025, its co-founder and executive John Marcus Lervik told Reuters on Wednesday. The company sells software that aggregates and analyzes vast volumes of industrial data, such as machine sensors, to increase efficiency and safety. Last year, it launched its own generative artificial intelligence tool to boost productivity. According to Reuters, Vion, the parent company of Ukraine's largest mobile operator Kyivstar, will take a hit of around 3.6 billion hryvnias in revenue in 2024 due to a massive cyber attack in December the Dutch telecoms group estimated on Thursday. The estimated lost revenue is associated with measures Kyivstar has taken to compensate customers for inconveniences caused by the disruptions, Vion said. According to Reuters, the Indian Navy said on Thursday it had rescued the crew of a U.S.-owned vessel in the Gulf of Aden after an attack by Yemen's Houthi movement as tensions in the region's sea lanes disrupted global trade. Following the attack on the U.S. Jenko Picardy late on Wednesday, the U.S. military said its forces had conducted strikes on 14 Houthi missiles that presented an imminent threat to merchant vessels and U.S. Navy ships in the region. According to Reuters, Israeli forces fighting to seize the southern Gaza Strip's main city pounded areas near the biggest hospital still functioning in the enclave on Thursday, sending patients and residents fleeing a battle they feared would lay the city to waste. According to Reuters, the U.S. Transportation Department said on Thursday it is awarding $148.8 million for projects in 20 states to repair or replace nearly 4,500 existing electric vehicle charging ports. The announcement is the latest in a string of awards to boost EV charging, as President Joe Biden's administration looks to finalize new rules in coming months that could dramatically boost EV sales. According to Reuters, Israel is praying that an emergency shipment brought to the Gaza border through Egypt, in a deal arranged by Qatar and France, will reach hostages held by Hamas in the besieged Palestinian enclave, Israeli President Isaac Herzog said on Thursday. We are praying that all the medication will reach them, but that's only the beginning, Herzog told the World Economic Forum in Davos, sitting next to a picture of the youngest of the 132 hostages, one-year-old Kafir Bibas. According to Reuters, BMW's partner in China has no plans to sell its stake in their joint venture, a document seen by Reuters on Thursday showed, contradicting media reports earlier this week. Our company and Brilliance China have never talked about the sale of Brilliance China's 25% stake in BMW Brilliance Automotive, said the letter from Shenyang Automotive Company to BMW dated January 16. According to Reuters, the British pound edged up on Thursday extending the previous day's gains after the annual rate of consumer price inflation unexpectedly increased last month, pushing markets to temper rate cut expectations. The consumer price index unexpectedly increased to 4.0% year-on-year in December from November's more than two-year low of 3.9%, giving a lift to sterling and sending bond yields higher as markets wager that the Bank of England will keep interest rates higher for longer. According to Reuters, Robotics startup figure said it has signed a partnership with BMW Manufacturing to deploy its humanoid robots in the carmaker's facility in the U.S., as more companies turn to human-like robots to take on certain physical tasks. This marks the first commercial deal figure has signed since it was founded in 2022. While the company didn't disclose how many robots BMW will be using, the partnership will start with small quantities and expand if performance targets have been met, according to Brett Adcock, chief executive at Figure. According to Reuters, a new batch of U.S. Bitcoin exchange-traded funds has attracted strong investor interest, though it is unclear if they will be able to maintain the pace of inflows in coming weeks. Investors have poured $1.9 billion into nine new exchange-traded funds tracking the spot price of Bitcoin in their first three days of trading, data from issuers and analysts showed, with fund giants BlackRock and Fidelity pulling in the lion's share of the flows. According to Reuters, in September, a group of Brazilian farmers and officials arrived in the Peruvian fishing town of Chanque. The draw. A new Chinese megaport rising on the Pacific coast, promising to turbocharge South America's trade ties with China. The $3.5 billion deep water port, set to start operations late this year, 
will provide China with a direct gateway to the resource-rich region. Over the last 10 years, Beijing has unseated the United States as the largest trade partner for South America, devouring its soy, corn and copper. According to Reuters, record crude output from the top U.S. oil field and busy crude pipelines to export hubs are boosting the price of the country's flagship crude at the Gulf Coast, analysts and traders said. West Texas Intermediate Crude at Magellan's East Houston Terminal, on average this month traded at a 45-cent premium per barrel to its price at Midland, Texas, the price point closest to the actual production of WTI. According to Reuters, FedEx Corp is waging financial battles on two fronts. The delivery giant wants a more profitable contract with the U.S. Postal Service and is seeking an elusive labor deal with its pilots. How both efforts shake out will be key to improving profit at its largest business, overnight delivery provider FedEx Express. According to Reuters, Vietnamese electric vehicle maker VinFast on Thursday said it delivered nearly 35,000 cars in 2023, below its target of at least 40,000 units, blaming slow EV adoption in some regions, tough competition and uncertain economy. The deliveries in the last three months of 2023, however, increased 35% against the third quarter to 13,513 units, the company said. According to Reuters, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called on the upper house of parliament to get on board and pass his plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda, a day after surviving a threatened rebellion over the much-criticized legislation by some in his party. At a press conference when Sunak tried to convince the public his conservatives were united, Around his plans to tackle illegal immigration, he appealed to the House of Lords to help him start the flights before this year's election. It was a clear acknowledgement that Sunak is concerned the unelected upper house could thwart his attempts to launch his Rwanda plan by trying to introduce changes or even drag out a process he needs to be completed quickly to fulfill his pledge that the flights will start in the spring. According to Reuters, Cancer drug developer CG Oncology said on Thursday it was targeting a valuation of nearly $1 billion for its initial public offering. The company is developing a therapy for patients with bladder cancer. Its lead product candidate is called Kretostomogene Grenadinorubvik. According to Reuters, China's cabinet has amended rules for the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee to strengthen the Communist Party's leadership over key policy issues, the official Xinhua news agency reported on Thursday. China has in recent months launched a sweeping regulatory overhaul to tighten the party's grip on the sprawling financial sector, amid an anti-graft campaign. According to Reuters, futures tracking the tech-heavy Nasdaq inched higher on Thursday, boosted by chip stocks after upbeat earnings from Taiwan's TSMC, while caution loomed on the timing of interest rate cuts as more corporate earnings rolled in. U.S. listed shares of Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing led pre-market gains among chipmakers with a 4.9% rise, after the world's largest contract semiconductor maker reported upbeat quarterly profit and projected upwards of a 20% revenue growth, driven by demand for artificial intelligence chips. According to Reuters, Swedish private equity giant EQT is targeting more acquisitions to accelerate growth and better compete in tough markets, its chief financial officer Kim Henriksen told Reuters on Thursday. We intend to take part in the consolidation in this industry, which has just started, Henriksen said in an interview after EQT reported 2023 results. According to Reuters, the International Olympic Committee on Thursday said it was confident French authorities would keep the Paris 2024 Olympics safe with an extensive security plan. The French capital is preparing for hundreds of thousands of visitors at the 16-day Games, including a July 26 opening ceremony along the River Seine with 600,000 spectators expected to watch 160 boats carrying the athletes through central Paris. According to Reuters, Goodyear Tire Rubber Company named Stellantis executive Mark Stewart as its CEO on Thursday, who will succeed longtime top boss Richard Kramer. During his tenure at Stellantis, Stewart led the brand's EV transformation in North America. According to Reuters, Russia's foreign ministry on Thursday called on Iran and Pakistan to show maximum restraint and solve their differences through diplomacy or risk playing into the hands of those who would like to see the region descend into chaos. Moscow spoke out after Pakistan said it had used killer drones and rockets to strike separatist Baloch militants inside Iran on Thursday, 
two days after Tehran said it had attacked the bases of another group within Pakistani territory. According to Bloomberg, as Ghana's debt restructuring talks approach their final stretch, the country's leaders are facing a new dilemma. The government needs to prove to investors that it can keep spending in check as it navigates a debt revamp, following a 2022 default on some $20 billion worth of international bonds and loans. But the ruling party also faces an election this December, pressuring it to up spending on things voters care about. That's leading some investors to fret the election will set Ghana back onto the slippery slope of wider budget deficits, potentially harming the debt restructuring progress. According to Reuters, Target said on Thursday its finance chief Michael Fidelki was stepping down from the role and has been named chief operating officer, effective February 4. Until his replacement is named, Fidelki will continue to serve as the company's CFO, it added. According to Reuters, the European Commission said on Thursday it had sent requests for information under the EU's Digital Services Act to 17 tech companies that it regards as very large online platforms and search engines. It said it contacted AliExpress, Amazon's Amazon Store, Apple's App Store, Booking.com, Meta's Facebook and Instagram, Alphabet's Google Search, Google Play, Google Maps and Google Shopping, Microsoft's LinkedIn and Bing, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube and Zalando. According to Reuters, the International Council on Mining and Metals said on Wednesday that its members would stay away from exploration-related activities at World Heritage Sites and focus on ensuring no net loss of biodiversity at any mining sites. At the ongoing World Economic Forum in Davos, major mining companies, including Freeport McMoran, Tech, and Newmont, committed to taking urgent action to support a nature-positive future by 2030. According to Reuters, Truist Financial Corp. reported a loss in the fourth quarter on Thursday, hurt by a raft of one-time charges tied to regulatory and restructuring activities, and a fall in net interest income. The lender took a $6.1 billion non-cash goodwill impairment charge, which it said will not impact liquidity, common share dividend payouts and capital ratios. According to Yahoo Finance, the man in charge of Tesla wants even more control of the company, and CEO Elon Musk is putting public pressure on the company's board of directors to acquire it. Musk warned earlier this week that for him to steer the all-electric carmaker to become a global leader in artificial intelligence and robotics, he'd need even greater sway over the company's decisions. According to Reuters, social media platform Reddit has drawn up detailed plans to launch its initial public offering in March, moving forward with a listing it has been eyeing for more than three years according to people familiar with the matter. It would be the first IPO of a major social media company since Pinterest's debut in 2019, and would come as Reddit and its peers face stiff competition for advertising dollars from the likes of TikTok and Facebook. According to Reuters, Mount Bank's fourth quarter profit plummeted 37% on Thursday, due to higher deposit costs and a special assessment fee the lender has to pay to refill a government deposit insurance fund. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corp's fund lost nearly $16 billion after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, and the banking regulator is charging the industry a fee to recoup the loss. According to Bloomberg, the oil supply squeeze widely expected at the end of last year now looks like it may have been a surplus, a reminder for any remaining crude bulls to tread carefully. A year ago, Crude traders and forecasters anticipated that the fourth quarter would be the strongest point of 2023, with China's post-pandemic demand recovery pushing prices up to $100 a barrel. More recently, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries has been predicting a record deficit of 3 million barrels a day. According to Reuters, Tata Technologies will invest 150 billion rupees in the Indian state of Telangana to set up government-affiliated skilling centers, the state government said on Thursday. The investment from the unit of Tata Motors is the second commitment to the Telangana government in two days after the Adani Group announced a $1.49 billion investment on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, India's central bank won't consider interest rate cuts unless inflation settles firmly around the 4% target with policymakers not even discussing the topic yet, Governor Shaktikanta Das said. While price gains have moderated, unless we see clear evidence that inflation is going to sustain at that level, it will be premature to talk about rate cuts, 
Das told Bloomberg Television's Hasland Amin in an interview on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos Thursday. The topic of rate cuts is not even under discussion, he said. According to Reuters, Keycorp posted a drop in its fourth quarter profit on Thursday as the lender recorded costs associated with replenishing a government deposit insurance fund, sending its shares down nearly 5% in the pre-market trading. The bank's fourth quarter profit slumped to 3 cents per share from 38 cents per share in the prior year quarter, also hit by a drop in interest income. According to Reuters, Japanese home builder Seikisui House said on Thursday it has struck a deal to buy Denver based builder MDC Holdings for about $4.95 billion in cash to become the fifth biggest home builder in the United States. Seikisui said in a statement it would pay $63 per share in MDC, about a 19% premium to MDC's closing price on Wednesday. MDC shares rose 16% in pre market trading after the announcement. According to Reuters, the war in Gaza will hit economies across the Middle East if it is not resolved and the conflict urgently needs a non-military solution, Qatar's finance minister told Reuters. Qatar, whose mediators are involved in talks on the release of Israeli hostages by Hamas, has also helped mediate in several regional conflicts including in Afghanistan. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures tipped higher on Thursday eyeing a rebound from recent losses as investors look to fresh quarterly earnings for inspiration amid dwindling hopes for an early 2024 interest rate cut. SP500 futures added around 0.4%, while those on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 jumped 0.7%. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures hugged the flatline. According to Reuters, the world is entering a new economic regime, that will see company performance driven by how boards manage mega trends including the transition to a low-carbon economy and AI, asset manager BlackRock said on Thursday. The world's biggest asset manager said figuring out how companies plan to build resilience into their strategy as a result of the changing macroeconomic and geopolitical backdrop would be a focus of talks with them ahead of annual shareholder meetings. According to Reuters, Defaults by U.S. companies with low junk credit ratings are likely to rise further in the first quarter of 2024, according to a Thursday report by credit rating agency Moody's Investor Service. Defaults among the lowest-rated U.S. companies will peak at 5.8% this quarter from 5.3% in November before leveling out to 4.1% by the end of 2024, Moody's analysts said. According to Reuters, Bear AG will likely hold off on presenting breakup plans at an investor update scheduled for early March as its CEO prefers to focus on an internal reorganization for now, two people familiar with the matter told Reuters on Thursday. The likely delay in preparations to separate Bayer's pharmaceuticals, consumer health and agriculture units comes even after several investors have for years urged the company to split up to shed a conglomerate discount. According to Reuters, U.S. edutech platform Coursera added a new user every minute on average for its artificial intelligence courses in 2023, CEO Jeff Majoncalda said on Thursday, in a clear sign of people upskilling to tap a potential boom in generative AI. The technology behind OpenAI's chat GPT has taken the world by a storm and sparked a race among companies to roll out their own versions of the viral chatbot. According to Reuters, Ukraine's biggest oil and gas firm Naftogaz aims to strike new deals with foreign traders to boost the amount of natural gas stored in underground facilities in Ukraine, CEO Oleksiy Chernyshov told Reuters on Thursday. Speaking on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Chernyshov said he was in discussion with German energy firms including RWE in Uniper and planned to visit Germany in March to make his pitch to clients. According to Reuters, Shares of Spirit Airlines extended losses to a third straight session on Thursday over lingering concerns around the company's future after a U.S. judge blocked its $3.8 billion merger with JetBlue Airways. Spirit was down about 6% before the bell, partly due to City downgrading its rating to sell from neutral. The stock has shed more than half of its value since the deal was blocked over anti-competition concerns on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the European Commission is set to recommend the EU reduces its net greenhouse gas emissions 90% by 2040, from 1990 levels, to ensure the bloc can reach net zero emissions a decade later, sources familiar with the matter told Reuters. 
the European Union is drafting its first 2040 climate target to bridge the gap between its existing goals to cut net emissions 55% by 2030 and reach net zero emissions by 2050. According to Reuters, a Russian state prosecutor asked a Moscow court on Thursday to jail prominent nationalist Igor Gherkin, who accuses President Vladimir Putin in the army top brass of not pursuing the Ukraine war effectively enough, for nearly five years. According to Reuters, navigation applications, such as Google Maps, have been asked by Paris's public transport authority to restrict suggested routes to the ones prepared for travelers during the 2024 Olympic Games, the body's chief executive said. We have asked to relay our transport plans so that the traveler takes the route we have indicated, Laurent Propst, head of Ile de France Mobilites, the authority governing public transport network operators in Paris and the surrounding region, told West France newspaper on Wednesday. According to Reuters, Indonesia has allowed three Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes to fly again after grounding them, as they have different configurations from a jet that was forced to make an emergency landing in the United States on January 5, its transport ministry said on Thursday. A cabin panel broke off a new Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet operated by Alaska Airlines in mid-flight, leading to the grounding of the model and inspections by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. According to Reuters, at least $24.2 billion worth of crypto was sent to illicit crypto wallet addresses in 2023, including addresses identified as sanctioned or linked to terrorist financing and scams, crypto research firm Chainalysis said on Thursday. Cryptocurrencies enable people to send money around the world without using the mainstream financial system. The underlying blockchain technology creates a record of transactions where senders and receivers are identified only by their wallet addresses, which are a string of letters and numbers. According to Reuters, Western officials say they are open to the idea of confiscating $300 minus $350 billion of frozen Russian financial assets to help support Ukraine, but how that would be done remains highly complex given it would set a controversial precedent. Here are some of the ideas that have been suggested. According to Reuters, U.S. single-family homebuilding dropped sharply in December after a string of strong gains, but new construction remains underpinned by a shortage of previously owned houses for sale. Single-family housing starts, which account for the bulk of homebuilding, fell 8.6% to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.027 million units last month, the Commerce Department's Census Bureau said on Thursday. Data for November was revised lower to show single-family starts rising to a rate of 1.124 million units instead of the previously reported 1.143 million units. According to Bloomberg, former New York City controller Scott Stringer said he's creating a campaign committee to raise money for a possible 2025 mayoral bid. He is among nearly a dozen Democrats who have been weighing a challenge to Mayor Eric Adams, whose approval rating has plummeted in the wake of the migrant crisis budget cuts and a federal criminal investigation into his fundraising. But Stringer's announcement Thursday of plans to form a campaign committee makes him the first potential candidate to take such a concrete step toward a challenge to Adams, who is seeking re-election. According to Reuters, Citigroup launched a private lending vehicle in partnership with alternative investment manager Lumen Arcs Capital on Thursday, looking to expand its footprint in a market that has attracted significant attention in recent months. Heightened regulation has prompted traditional banks to re-evaluate the loans they provide. They have responded by teaming up with private capital providers, that are not subject to the same degree of oversight as banks, and can afford to provide riskier loans. According to Reuters, several U.S. banks reported a plunge in fourth-quarter profits on Thursday, hurt by a drop in interest income and charges tied to replenishing a deposit insurance fund. Higher payouts on deposits to retain customers from chasing high-yielding alternatives have resulted in an industry-wide contraction in net interest margins for the banks that had until recently benefited from the U.S. Federal Reserve's rate hikes. According to Yahoo Finance, Apple has updated its long-standing App Store guidelines, giving developers the option to let users make in-app purchases for iOS apps outside of its App Store. But the changes still haven't won over one of the company's longtime critics. Under the new rules, app developers can provide customers with links to third-party purchase options for their apps, but they must still pay Apple fees of either 12% or 27%.
According to Reuters, Deutsche Bank Chief Executive Officer Christian Sewing told CNBC on Thursday that mergers and acquisitions were not a priority for the German lender this year. The CEO of Germany's largest bank was speaking on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos days after the emergence of renewed speculation of possible mergers among European banks. According to Reuters, Lufthansa is pulling flight capacity from other countries to meet booming travel demand in India, which is now the German airline's fastest-growing major market, Chief Commercial Officer Heiko Reitz said on Thursday. Lufthansa's flight capacity to India is 14% higher than pre-COVID levels, even as it has yet to see a full recovery in some other markets, Reitz told Reuters on the sidelines of the Wings India event in Hyderabad. India is growing faster than the rest of our other destinations. We are taking our capacity from other markets and putting it into India, he added. Lufthansa Group, which includes Swiss Air, currently operates 64 weekly flights to India, up from 56 before the pandemic. According to Reuters, Honda Motor said on Thursday it would continue to focus on sales of hybrid models and light trucks in the United States this year in response to more demand for those vehicles. Legacy car manufacturers narrowed their focus to hybrid vehicles over the past year as buyers snapped up more of those in place of all electric models. According to Reuters, Canada will on Thursday grant the giant Arctic territory of Nunavut control over its reserves of gold, diamonds, iron, cobalt and rare earth metals, officials said, a move that could boost exploration and development. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's itinerary for the day shows he will sign a devolution agreement with Nunavut Premier P.J. Akigok, granting the territory the right to collect royalties that now go to the federal government. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company expects a return to solid growth this quarter and gave itself room to raise capital spending in 2024 suggesting the world's most valuable chipmaker anticipates a recovery in smartphone and computing demand. The main chipmaker to Apple Inc. and NVIDIA Corp. is budgeting capital expenditure of $28 billion to $32 billion, versus about $30 billion in 2023, and expecting revenue growth to bounce back to at least 20% for the year. It's moving ahead with plans for chipmaking plants in Japan, Arizona and Germany the first of which will begin mass production at the end of 2024 in a big boost to TSMC's global footprint. According to Reuters, Chinese designer Sean Soon emphasized silhouettes for his fall-winter menswear show on Thursday, piling layers of finely tailored coats in autumn hues on runway models. Remembering China in the early 1990s, when the country was discovering fashion from the West, he recalled how people embraced newness and enjoyed mixing and matching new styles. According to Reuters, wholesale electricity prices for 2024 in most areas of the U.S. are seen to be close to or slightly lower than in 2023, because of relatively stable generation fuel costs, the U.S. Energy Information Administration said in a report on Thursday. Periods of high demand or power market supply constraints, however, could lead to temporary spikes in wholesale prices, it said. According to Reuters, the Dutch government on Thursday said it would begin adhering to the essence of Europe's landmark AI Act, immediately, and that the Netherlands has set aside 204.5 million euros to foster local investment in artificial intelligence. The announcements were made in a document outlining the government's strategy for taking advantage of generative AI systems such as ChatGPT while protecting against risks. According to Reuters, French data watchdog CNIL said on Thursday it imposed a 10 million euro fine on U.S. web services provider Yahoo for failings linked to the company's cookie policy. The watchdog accused the company of failing to respect the choice of internet users who refused cookies on its main website and for not allowing users of its email client to freely withdraw their consent to cookies. According to Bloomberg, Coinbase Global Inc. said buying cryptocurrency on an exchange was more like collecting beanie babies than investing in a stock or bond. The biggest U.S. crypto exchange made the comparison Wednesday in a New York federal court hearing. Coinbase was arguing for the dismissal of a Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuit accusing it of selling unregistered securities. According to Reuters, the number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits fell last week to the lowest level in nearly one to half a year, suggesting job growth likely remained solid in January. 
The unexpected decline in initial claims reported by the Labor Department on Thursday added to strong retail sales growth in December in painting an upbeat picture of the economy, and could make it difficult for the Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates in March as financial markets anticipate. According to Bloomberg, Yemen's Houthis vowed they would keep attacking ships in the Red Sea, even after the U.S. launched a fourth round of missiles strikes against them. It is an honor for our people to be in such a confrontation with these evil forces, Abdul Malik al Houthi, the head of the Iran backed militant group, said in a televised speech on Thursday, citing the US, the UK, and Israel. The Houthis are now in direct confrontation with all three and are taking steps to bolster their military capabilities, he said. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury on Thursday said it imposed sanctions on a United Arab Emirates-based shipping company for violating the $60 per barrel price cap on Russian crude oil exports in its first such enforcement action this year. The Treasury said in a statement that the Office of Foreign Assets Control designation sanctions were imposed on Hennessy Shipping County Limited, which it said was the beneficial owner of 18 mostly older tankers acquired in late 2022. According to Reuters, Ukraine is working, intensively, with partners to restore air travel suspended for nearly two years, with the main focus on Borispol International Airport outside the capital Kyiv, a presidential official said on Thursday. Ukraine's airspace was abruptly closed by Russia's invasion in February 2022 due to the security risk for civil aviation and anyone visiting has to make their way by road or rail from a neighboring country. According to Reuters, Wheat shipments via the Suez Canal fell by almost 40% in the first half of January to 0.5 million metric tons due to attacks in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, the World Trade Organization said on Thursday on social media platform X. The WTO data, based on a dashboard developed jointly by the International Grains Council and the World Trade Organization, adds to signs of ship diversions following attacks on vessels by Iran-aligned Houthi militants in Yemen. According to Reuters, J.P. Morgan said on Thursday it expects the Bank of England to start cutting interest rates in August this year, citing a possible easing in inflation and optimism about a soft landing. The brokerage now expects a 75 basis point rate cut by end 2024, taking J.P. Morgan's policy rate forecast to 4.5%, while the central bank's current benchmark rate stands at 5.25%. According to Bloomberg, Nelson Peltz said Walt Disney Company is unable to heal self-inflicted wounds under current leadership and should be aiming for Netflix-like margins, days after the entertainment giant knocked back the activists' bid for a seat on its board. In a proxy statement on Thursday, Peltz's Tree and Fund Management LP, which holds about $3 billion in Disney stock, reiterated calls for an overhaul of governance and strategy at the California-based company. According to Reuters, security challenges in West Africa following the coup in Niger last year will be among key topics U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will discuss with African leaders next week during his trip to the region, the State Department's top Africa diplomat said on Thursday. Blinken will travel to Cape Verde, Ivory Coast, Nigeria and Angola from January 21 through January 26, the department said in a statement, where he will discuss U.S.-African partnerships over trade, climate, infrastructure, health and other issues. According to Bloomberg, Mexico and Hungary are tapping global bond markets for the second time this year, selling euro-denominated debt as emerging market countries continue to test investor appetite following the holiday season. Mexico is marketing sustainable sovereign bonds due in eight years at a spread of about 180 basis points over mid-swaps, according to people familiar with the matter, who ask not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak about it. The book runners for the benchmark transaction are Banco Bilbao Vizcaya Argentaria SA, Citigroup Inc., Deutsche Bank AG, HSBC Group and Natixis SA, the people said. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks gained ground on Thursday and benchmark Treasury yields moved higher after robust U.S. labor market data weakened bets that the Federal Reserve would begin lowering its key policy rate as early as March. The SP500 and the Nasdaq were higher tech and tech-adjacent momentum stocks providing much of the upside muscle, while more defensive sectors kept the Dow essentially flat. According to Reuters, two oil tankers that had diverted away from the Red Sea have turned back and passed through the Bab al-Mandab Strait, ship tracking data shows, 
though tensions in the region continued to disrupt global shipping and trade. The vessel's return, as tracked by LSEG and Kepler, comes nearly a week after the United States and Britain launched strikes against Houthi positions in Yemen in retaliation for the militant group's protracted attacks on commercial shipping since November. According to Reuters, Coinbase Global, the largest listed cryptocurrency exchange, could take a hit to its trading volume and margin, analysts said, if more investors dabble in Bitcoin from the safety of cheap exchange trade funds tracking its spot price. It will also impact Coinbase's trading commissions and spreads. The difference between the bid and ask price, JP Morgan analyst Kenneth Worthington said. According to Reuters, activist investor Tree and Fund Management on Thursday pushed in a regulatory filing for election of its nominees to Walt Disney's board of directors, saying fresh perspective can help restore the magic to the entertainment company. Trian noted Disney's per share earnings in its most recent fiscal year were lower than a decade ago, despite more than $100 million in invested capital. Profit margins of Disney's streaming business lag peers like Netflix, it observed. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury and Chinese finance ministry officials started a two-day meeting in Beijing on Thursday to discuss financial stability and capital markets issues between the two economic powers, deepening an engagement revived last year. A U.S. Treasury official said the meeting, the first in-person meeting in China of the new group, was due to conclude on Friday. Other topics include international financial institutions such as the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, cross-border payments and cooperation to combat money laundering and narcotics trafficking. According to Bloomberg, the Japanese homebuilder deal hunt is picking up. Seikisui House Limited announced a $4.9 billion agreement on Thursday to buy MDC Holdings Inc., a purchase that will help it meet a key target in its ambitions to diversify beyond Japan. It's likely the biggest U.S. purchase of a homebuilder by a Japanese company, according to investment banker Margaret Whalen. According to Reuters, Eurozone yields edged up to new six-week highs on Thursday in the wake of U.S. data showing jobs growth remains solid and as the European Central Bank enters its quiet period before next week's rate-setting meeting. Germany's 10-year bond yield, the benchmark for the euro area, was up three basis points at 2.31%, its highest since December 5. According to Reuters, Michael Burke has been appointed as the new chairman and chief executive of LVMH Fashion Group, overseeing all of the group's fashion labels, the luxury goods giant said on Thursday. The LVMH veteran, chairman and CEO Bernard Arno's longest-serving lieutenant, replaces longtime fashion group head Sidney Toledano, who was named advisor to Arno and will exit the company's executive committee. According to Yahoo Finance, mortgage rates dipped again this week, enticing more rate-sensitive buyers and sellers to return to the housing market. The average rate for a 30-year loan dropped to 6.60% from 6.66% a week prior, according to Freddie Mac on Thursday. The latest average is the lowest level in seven months, since May 2023, when rates were around 6.57%. According to Yahoo Finance, Humana stock tumbled more than 12% on Thursday after the U.S. health insurer reported an increase in older patients seeking care, which would hurt its fourth quarter results. Humana reported the preliminary 2023 fourth quarter numbers, 91.4% medical loss ratio, compared to an 89.5% expected, ahead of its fourth quarter earnings on January 25. According to Reuters, Atlanta Federal Reserve President Rafael Bostic said on Thursday he was open to reducing U.S. interest rates sooner than he had anticipated if there is convincing evidence in coming months that inflation is falling faster than he expected. Bostic had previously said he expected it would be appropriate to cut the U.S. Central Bank's benchmark overnight interest rate in the second half of this year, but he said on Thursday that, if we continue to see a further accumulation of downside surprises in the data it's possible for me to get comfortable to advocate normalization sooner than the third quarter. But the evidence would need to be convincing. According to Bloomberg, mortgage rates in the U.S. fell after two weeks of increases, dropping to the lowest level in almost eight months. The average for a 30-year, fixed loan was 6.6%, the lowest since May and down from 6.66% last week, Freddie Mac said in a statement Thursday. According to Bloomberg, 
A fast-moving storm will drop snow from New York to Washington on Friday, threatening to snarl traffic and delay trains as commuters head to work. Just days after ending its 701-day snow drought, New York City may get two to four inches before dawn and Washington as much as two inches, said Brian Hurley, a senior branch forecaster at the U.S. Weather Prediction Center. The system will also fuel storms on the eastern sides of Lakes Michigan, Erie and Ontario. According to Reuters, Microsoft-backed OpenAI has signed a deal with Arizona State University as the ChatGPT owner looks to expand its partnerships beyond technology and media firms. The university said on Thursday it will get access to ChatGPT Enterprise, a version of the viral chatbot that offers more security, privacy and higher speed access to OpenAI's technology. According to Reuters, a Spanish court has ruled a former Facebook moderator's mental health was damaged by his work reviewing graphic content such as beheadings, in a case that could have implications for how social media firms work with moderators. The Barcelona court, upholding a decision by Spain's social security agency, said the psychiatric treatment the subcontracted moderator required was due to work-related issues, meaning he is entitled to extra compensation for sick leave. According to Yahoo Finance, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said in a speech Thursday that he doesn't see cutting interest rates until the third quarter, but that he is open to earlier cuts if there is convincing evidence of a surprise decline in inflation. He noted in his speech that he had adjusted his projected time of when cuts could begin to the third quarter from the fourth. According to Reuters, Mexico's two largest rail operators have made positive proposals to create passenger rail transport projects, Transport Minister Jorge Nuno said on Thursday. Mexico's Transport Ministry said this week it had received five proposals from interested parties to participate in the rollout of a project to boost passenger transport on railways being developed across the country. According to Reuters, Saudi Arabia will host a special World Economic Forum meeting in April. Economy Minister Faisal Alibrahim said on Thursday, as it aims to boost the global profile of the kingdom and its capital Riyadh. The meeting, scheduled to take place from April 28 to 29, will focus on global collaboration, growth and energy, Alibrahim said in Davos, Switzerland, where the World Economic Forum's main annual event is currently taking place. According to Reuters, U.S. mortgage rates fell this week to the lowest since May 2023, Freddie Mac reported on Thursday, providing a possible boost to buyer traffic in the housing market. The average fixed-rate 30-year mortgage fell to 6.60% as of Thursday from 6.66% the week prior, Freddie Mac said in its weekly report on home loan borrowing costs. According to Reuters, Alphabet-owned Google said on Thursday it would invest $1 billion in a data center in the United Kingdom, which would expand the company's presence in the key market. The data center will be located on a 33-acre site in Waltham Cross, Hertfordshire which Google purchased in October 2020. According to Yahoo Finance, after a string of downgrades from Wall Street analysts, Apple's stock received a much-needed vote of confidence on Thursday as Bank of America analyst Wamzi Mohan upgraded the bank's position on the company and raised its price target. Shares of Apple were up nearly 3% as of midday Thursday. In a research note, Mohan upgraded Apple from neutral to buy and increased its price objective from $182.68 to $225. Mohan said the company stands to benefit from a number of industry trends, as well as a glut of users who are using older iPhones and will need to upgrade to newer models in the coming years. According to Reuters, a judge in the election interference case against former U.S. President Donald Trump in Georgia has set a hearing next month regarding accusations that the Fulton County District Attorney and her lead prosecutor had an improper relationship and mishandled public money, according to a court document. The planned February 15 hearing follows accusations by co-defendant Michael Roman, who is seeking to have his indictment dismissed, that Fonnie Willis and the prosecutor, Nathan Wade, engaged in an improper, clandestine personal relationship, the Thursday court filing said. According to Bloomberg, after being caught flat-footed early last year, fund managers have gone all in on technology stocks, so much so that it's sparking warnings that the Nasdaq 100 index is looking ever more vulnerable to investor pullbacks. There are ample signs that investor euphoria around big tech is running high amid bets that the Federal Reserve will deliver a rapid series of interest rate cuts in the coming months. 
According to Reuters, countries in the Red Sea region need to enhance security to protect seafarers at risk as attacks on merchant shipping worsen, industry officials said on Thursday. Attacks on ships by Yemen's Iran-allied Houthi militia since November have slowed trade between Asia and Europe and alarmed major powers in an escalation of the war between Israel and Palestinian Hamas militants in Gaza. According to Reuters, an index of semiconductor stocks was up more than 2% on Thursday and chip stocks were helping the broader market after Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing cited strong demand for high-end chips used in artificial intelligence. U.S. listed shares of the world's largest contract semiconductor maker, which also forecast more than 20% growth in 2024 revenue, were last up 7.2%, the biggest percentage gainer for the day on the semiconductor index. The SP500 was up 0.3%. According to Bloomberg, the Red Sea turmoil that's wreaking havoc on shipping is hitting the market for Robusta beans, the variety used in instant coffee, and upending the usual flow of trade. Buyers of Robusta beans are shunning purchases from top producer Vietnam due to surging shipping costs and longer-than-usual travel times. They are instead seeking to secure more supplies from Brazil, according to people familiar with the matter who ask not to be named because the information is private. According to Reuters, Iran launched missile strikes on three different countries this week, Iraq, Syria and Pakistan while proxy militant groups it backs continue to target U.S. and Western interests and fight Israel, stoking fears of conflict that could engulf the Middle East and spread to other regions. Why did Iran conduct strikes on Pakistan, Iraq and Syria? According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin fell to the lowest price level since the U.S. approved nearly a dozen exchange-traded funds that hold the cryptocurrency last week. Now that the ETF hype has faded a bit, it would make sense for traders' attention to be focused elsewhere, said Bartosz Lipinski, chief executive officer at Cube, exchange, a trading platform. Current options positioning suggests support around $40,000, which is a major psychological price point. According to Yahoo Finance, the key drivers of the late 2023 stock market rally have faded. With investors increasingly questioning when the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates, the so-called soft landing, trade which saw investors pour into interest rate sensitive sectors has stumbled to start 2024. According to Reuters, a former employee of Pfizer Inc. was convicted of insider trading on Thursday for buying stock options in November 2021 just before Pfizer announced clinical trial results for the COVID antiviral drug Paxlovid, federal prosecutors said. A federal jury in Manhattan found Amit Dogger, 44, of Hillsboro, New Jersey, guilty on one count of securities fraud, prosecutors said. Prosecutors alleged Dogger had traded and tipped a friend on November 4, 2021, the day before the drugmaker announced that Paxlovid had performed well in the trial. According to Reuters, Germany's finance minister predicted a higher level of growth in the mid-term in Germany and said his party would counter the rise of the far right by tackling the problems that strengthened it, speaking to Reuters in an interview on Thursday. Christian Lindner welcomed the German parliament's decision earlier in the day that the country does not need to suspend its break on raising debt, and said he could currently not envisage a situation where that would be necessary. According to Reuters, the Biden administration's top trade official for Asia, Sarah Bianchi, is stepping down as the U.S. Trade Representative's office plots its next moves on trade talks with Indo-Pacific countries after failing to reach a deal in November, a source familiar with the matter said on Thursday. Bianchi, the deputy USTR overseeing Asia, Africa, investment, services, textiles and industrial competitiveness, is a longtime economic policy advisor to President Joe Biden, including during his time as vice president, when she ran his economic and domestic policy teams. According to Yahoo Finance, artificial intelligence isn't going to put you out of a job, it's actually going to help you do it better. AI will work alongside humans and complement the skill sets they're bringing to the table, according to Workday co-CEO Carl Eschenbach. According to Reuters, the much-anticipated U.S. debut of 11 exchange-traded funds tied to spot Bitcoin has contributed to a record start to the new year for ETF launches, data from issuers and analysts showed. A total of 35 new ETFs made their debut in the first two weeks of 2024 compared to the previous record of 23 set in 2022 and only 7 in the same period last year. 
The early 2024 number includes nine newly created spot Bitcoin ETFs and two spot Bitcoin ETF conversions. According to Reuters, Alaska Airlines said on Thursday it will extend the cancellation of its Boeing 737 MAX 9 flights through Sunday as the Federal Aviation Administration continues to review inspection data from an initial group of 40 planes. The FAA had said last week that 40 of 171 grounded planes needed to be re-inspected before the agency would review the results and determine if it is safe to allow the MAX 9s to resume flying following the January 5 mid-air cabin blowout on an eight-week-old Alaska jet. According to Yahoo Finance, several of the nation's best-known mid-sized lenders reported sizable drops in profits during the fourth quarter, a reminder of how challenging 2023 was. The problem is that things aren't expected to get much better in 2024. According to Reuters, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said on Thursday that the company was bringing its AI research team closer together, with a more business-focused generative AI team launched last year doubling down on a push to get the technology into products. The social media giant was building out its infrastructure to accommodate the push and planned to have about 350,000 H100 GPUs from chip designer NVIDIA by the end of the year, Zuckerberg said in posts on Meta's Instagram and Threads platforms. According to Reuters, there is no way to solve Israel's long-term security challenges in the region and the short-term challenges of rebuilding Gaza without the establishment of a Palestinian state, U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said on Thursday. Speaking at a news briefing, Miller said Israel had an opportunity right now as countries in the region were ready to provide security assurances to Israel. According to Reuters, British maritime security firm Ambry on Thursday said that a Marshall Islands flagged U.S. owned bulk carrier reported that four unmanned aerial vehicles approached and circled the vessel approximately 87 miles southeast of Yemen's city of Mukalla. One of the UAVs reportedly fell into the water. No damage or injuries were reported. The bulker was not impacted and continued its voyage, Ambry said in an advisory note. According to Reuters, National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Homendy said on Thursday that Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun called after a cabin panel on a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet blew out in midair, and told her, they want to rectify, errors made in the past. Homendy made her remarks to reporters after she gave a briefing to House of Representative lawmakers investigating the Alaska Airlines incident this month. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks ended higher on Thursday as AI optimism drove gains in NVIDIA and other chip stocks, while doubts about interest rate cuts hit utilities and real estate shares. U.S. listed shares of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing soared after the world's largest contract semiconductor maker projected 2024 revenue growth of more than 20% on booming demand for high-end chips used in artificial intelligence applications. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden lambasted Donald Trump for comments casting the U.S. as a failing nation, plugging his agenda in a Republican-leaning state he aims to pick up in November's election. The president during a Thursday event in North Carolina hit Trump for predicting the economy will crater and hoping any stock market crash happens under Biden's watch. According to Reuters, Danish energy company Orsted, the world's biggest offshore wind firm, said on Thursday that construction of its South Fork offshore wind farm was halfway done with more than six of its 12 turbines successfully deployed. Six turbines are commissioned and already delivering power to the Long Island grid. The seventh turbine has also been installed, with components for the eighth turbine next to be installed, the company said. According to Reuters, Argentina's soybean plantings are nearly complete for the current season with 97% of some 17.3 million hectares of farmland set aside for the harvest already planted, the Buenos Aires Grains Exchange said on Thursday. The exchange noted that significant moisture levels have benefited the 2023-24 harvest for soybeans, the country's top cash crop. According to Reuters, Brazil should end 2024 with a primary deficit of 55.3 billion reais, the Federal Audit Court said in the latest sign of skepticism that President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva's government can meet its pledge to eliminate the fiscal deficit. After Lula upped spending on social measures in his first full year in office, the market is worried his administration won't meet its fiscal goals. Despite falling interest rates, long-term future interest rates remain high, 
underlining market discomfort with the government's fiscal situation. According to Bloomberg, Japan, Asia's most popular market, also has its detractors. Investor enthusiasm for Japanese equities dominates the region, with 59% of Asia's fund managers overweight on the country, according to a Bank of America Corp. survey this month with India a distant second at 18%. The optimism is based on the country's Nikkei 225 and Topix indexes reaching their highest levels in 34 years, coupled with a weak yen and the return of inflation. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index edged higher on Thursday, helped by gains for the industrial and the consumer staples sectors, but gains were held in check by uncertain prospects for the expected start of central bank interest rate cuts. The Toronto Stock Exchange's SPTSX Composite Index ended up 61.71 points, or 0.3%, at 20,756.73, clawing back some of the previous day's sharp decline. According to Reuters, Massachusetts, Connecticut and Rhode Island extended on Thursday the date bids are due in the state's next offshore wind solicitations from January 31 to March 27. Offshore wind is expected to play a critical role in U.S. President Joe Biden's and several states' plans to decarbonize the power grid and combat climate change. According to Yahoo Finance, while a swath of retailers and home goods stores struggled in 2023, Williams-Sonoma has continued its momentum from the pandemic, partially due to its strategy to hold the line on pricing. CEO Laura Alber made the decision to stop the discounting, as physical retailers shuttered their doors due to COVID-19 mandates. Now, it's part of the company's operating model. According to Reuters, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon's compensation climbed about 4.3% to $36 million for 2023 the bank said on Thursday. The head of the largest U.S. bank was paid $34.5 million for 2022 and 2021 against a backdrop of economic uncertainty, geopolitical tensions and the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Reuters, Amazon.com said on Thursday it is laying off fewer than 5% of employees at its Buy with Prime unit. Launched in 2022, Buy with Prime gives retailers, who are not Amazon merchants, fulfillment and delivery services through its logistics network. According to Reuters, PPG Industries beat Wall Street estimates for fourth quarter profit on Thursday, as the industrial coatings maker benefited from increased sales of vehicles as well as strength in its aerospace segment. The Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania-based firm reported an adjusted profit of $1.53 per share for the quarter ended December 31, compared with the average analyst estimate of $1.50, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, Walmart said on Thursday that it will raise the annual average salary and bonus for its U.S. store managers beginning Feb 1, taking the average hourly wage at the retail giant to more than $18. Following the planned move, the average salary for store managers at Walmart will be at $128,000 a year from $117,000. The annual bonus could be as high as 200% of base salary, depending on targets achieved and profits made by the store, it added. According to Reuters, Turkey's first astronaut and three other crew members representing Europe were launched from Florida on Thursday on a voyage to the International Space Station in the latest commercially arranged mission from Texas startup Axiom Space. A SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule carrying the Axiom Quartet lifted off about an hour before sunset from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, beginning a planned 36-hour flight to the orbiting laboratory. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. The number one focus for investors in Asia on Friday will be the latest Japanese consumer inflation figures, with markets across the region hoping to draw support from the strong rise on world markets the day before and end a torrid week on a high. According to Bloomberg, Massimo Corp. Chief Executive Officer Joe Kiani, waging a legal fight with Apple Inc. over a blood oxygen feature, said that consumers are better off without the iPhone maker's version of the technology. The remarks followed Apple's decision to cease sales of smartwatches Thursday that had the tool, a gauge of blood oxygen saturation known as a pulse oximeter, which had been a heavily marketed health feature on the devices. The move stemmed from a ruling by the U.S. International Trade Commission that found the technology violated Massimo patents. 
According to Reuters, two major U.S. regional banks raised a total $4.75 billion selling bonds on Thursday, on the back of strong demand in a sign that fixed income investors are no longer jittery about regional banks after the March banking crisis. Citizens Bank on Thursday sold $1.25 billion in six year senior unsecured callable fixed to floating rate notes. U.S. Bancorp, meanwhile, sold $3.5 billion in six year and 11 year callable senior unsecured fixed to floating rate notes. According to Reuters, U.S. department store chain Macy's is cutting 2,350 jobs and closing five stores, as it aims to streamline its operations, a company spokesperson told Reuters on Thursday. The layoffs make up 3.5% of the overall workforce across Macy's. The company operated 722 store locations as of January 2023 and employed 94,570 full and part-time employees, excluding seasonal hires. According to Yahoo Finance, J.P. Morgan Chase boosted the compensation of CEO Jamie Dimon after the lender earned more money in 2023 than any American bank ever. Dimon's 2023 compensation rose to $36 million from $34.5 million in 2022, the bank disclosed in a Thursday regulatory filing. The amount for 2023 includes a base salary of $1.5 million and $34.5 million in performance-based compensation. According to Reuters, Vans sneaker maker VF Corp said on Thursday the cyber incident that hit the company in December led to a breach of personal data of about 35.5 million consumers, and added that it does not expect a material impact to its financials. The unauthorized activity, detected on December 13, disrupted global customer orders on its e-commerce site, delayed order fulfillment and led to cancellation of some product orders, VF disclosed in a regulatory filing. According to Reuters, the European Union's competition watchdog plans to block Amazon.com's $1.4 billion deal for robot vacuum maker iRobot, the Wall Street Journal said on Thursday, citing people familiar with the matter. Shares of the Roomba vacuum maker plunged 36% to $15 in trading after the bell. According to Reuters, the replacement for the ground-based U.S. nuclear arsenal anchored by the Minuteman III has officially busted through its $95.8 billion budget due to the COVID-19 pandemic and inflation, the Air Force said on Thursday. According to Reuters, Accelera, a zero-emissions business unit of Cummins, Daimler Trucks Buses U.S. Holding, and Packar, on Thursday picked Marshall County, Mississippi as the site for advanced battery cell manufacturing in the United States. Last year, the three companies had come together for battery cell production in the United States for commercial electric vehicles, with each owning about 30% in the joint venture. According to Bloomberg, America is seeing more and more of its most fertile land snapped up by China and other foreign buyers, yet problems with how the U.S. tracks such data means it's difficult to know just how much. Foreign ownership and investment in U.S. farmland, Pastures and forests jumped to about 40 million acres in 2021, up 40% from 2016, according to Department of Agriculture data. But an analysis conducted by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, a nonpartisan watchdog that reports to Congress, found mistakes in the data, including the largest land holding linked with China being counted twice. Other challenges include the USDA's reliance on foreigners self-reporting their activity. According to Reuters, Citigroup CEO Jane Fraser held a conference call on Thursday with managing directors to discuss the bank's sweeping overhaul, according to two sources familiar with the situation, as it eliminated more leadership roles this week. In separate conversations, managers in markets, risk and investment banking were informed they were being let go as part of the reorganization, according to the sources and two others familiar with the process who declined to be identified discussing personnel matters. According to Reuters, General Motors Cadillac is ramping up production of its Larique Compact, electric sport utility vehicle now that more batteries are available and demand for luxury EVs remains strong despite a slowdown for other types of EVs, a senior executive said on Thursday. Production of Larique has been far behind initial targets, hamstrung mainly by an issue with assembling battery modules that has crimped GM's EV plans. According to Reuters, the New York State's utilities regulator on Thursday approved Con Edison's $1.2 billion reliable clean city project in Queens. 
The Idlewild project is key to the state's efforts in reducing greenhouse gas emissions to 85% of 1990 levels by 2050, the New York State Public Service Commission said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks are set to end the week on a high as a rally in the world's largest technology companies fueled a rebound on Wall Street. Equity futures in Australia, Japan and Hong Kong point to early gains after the SP500 snapped a two-day losing streak as bond market volatility abated. The Nasdaq 100 closed at an all-time high as Apple Inc. climbed on an analyst upgrade and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co.'s outlook lifted shipmakers on hopes for a global tech recovery in 2024. According to Reuters, the dollar headed for a second weekly gain in a row on Friday on signs of resilience in the U.S. economy and caution about rate cuts from central bankers. Weekly gains on the risk-sensitive Australian and New Zealand dollars of 1.7% and 2.1% are set to be the largest since November and June respectively. Markets price a 57% chance of a U.S. rate cut in March, down from 75% a week ago. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc., which is poised to launch its Vision Pro mixed reality headset on February 2, is already envisioning future workplace applications for the device, including using it for surgery, aircraft repair and teaching students. In a video sent to employees this week, Apple executives Mike Rockwell and Alan Dye discussed the product's development, as well as potential growth areas for the still nascent technology. Bloomberg News obtained a transcript of the conversation which came just before Apple began accepting pre-orders for the Vision Pro on Friday. According to Bloomberg, Japan's consumer inflation decelerated in line with expectations in December, providing the Bank of Japan with another reason to wait beyond next week's board meeting before ending its negative rate policy. Consumer prices excluding fresh food rose 2.3% from a year ago, cooling for a second month, the Internal Affairs Ministry reported Friday. The reading matched the consensus call from economists. A deeper drop in energy prices and a slower pace of gains for processed food weighed on the index. According to Reuters, British luxury carmaker Bentley on Friday reported an 11% drop in vehicle sales for 2023 as high-end consumers felt the pinch of rising costs and slowing economies, with sales down in its top three markets, Europe, the Americas and China. The luxury market was not immune from the challenging market conditions seen around the world in the second half of 2023, CEO Adrian Hallmark said in a statement. We remain cautiously optimistic for the year ahead, with a continued robust global demand by market and model. According to Reuters, Japan's core inflation stayed above the central bank's 2% target in December but slowed for a second straight month, data showed on Friday reinforcing expectations it will be in no hurry to phase out its massive monetary stimulus. The data, which matched median market forecasts, highlights receding inflationary pressure from raw material imports, and heightens the chance the Bank of Japan will maintain ultra-low interest rates at next week's meeting. According to Bloomberg, U.S. officials acknowledge that airstrikes against Houthi militants in Yemen won't deter the group from attacks that have roiled commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Yet that doesn't mean the military campaign will stop anytime soon. President Joe Biden candidly described the dilemma Thursday when he was asked about the efforts to weaken Houthi capabilities after the Iran-backed group's series of drone and missile strikes disrupted shipping in in the Bab el-Mandeb Strait, a vital trade waterway. According to Bloomberg, chaos in the Red Sea is starting to disrupt shipments of produce from coffee to fruit and threatening to halt a slowdown in food inflation that brought some relief to strained consumers. Vessels loaded with foodstuffs are among those avoiding Houthi attacks in the key waterway by sailing around Africa, a longer and costlier route. But unlike gas, oil and consumer goods cargoes that have also been affected, lengthier shipping times risk making perishable foods unsellable. According to Bloomberg, Google's YouTube and Spotify Technology SA, the world's most popular video and music services, are joining Netflix Inc. in steering clear of Apple Inc.'s upcoming mixed reality headset. YouTube said in a statement Thursday that it isn't planning to launch a new app for the Apple Vision Pro, nor will it allow its long-standing iPad application to work on the device. YouTube, like Netflix, is recommending that customers use a web browser if they want to see its content. YouTube users will be able to use YouTube in Safari on the Vision Pro at launch. According to Bloomberg, Caspi, 
Casey's largest shareholders raised about $1 billion in an upsized initial public offering as the Kazakhstan mobile app company adds momentum to U.S. listings, according to people familiar with the matter. The investors sold 11.3 million American depository shares of Caspi.KZ for $92 apiece on Thursday, said the people, who asked not to be identified because the information wasn't public yet. According to Bloomberg, a ship carrying Australian cattle initially headed to the Middle East appears to have diverted toward Africa, a first indication that ships loaded with animals could face longer journeys due to the escalating conflict in the Red Sea. The Bahija left Fremantle Port in Western Australia for Aqaba, Jordan on January 5. On Tuesday, it changed course for East London in South Africa, according to shipping data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, global passive funds are putting added strain on the world's worst performing stock market as they join actively managed peers in the January sell-off of Chinese and Hong Kong equities. Managers of benchmark tracking funds have sold $300 million net of shares traded in mainland China and Hong Kong so far this month, according to a Morgan Stanley analysis. That's a reversal from the last half of 2023 when they were the rare net buyers, recording $700 million of inflows. According to Reuters, Wells Fargo employees at a small bank branch in Atwater, California, voted against forming a union on Thursday making it the first Wells site to reject burgeoning unionization efforts, the Committee for Better Bankers said in a statement. The vote was 3-1 to one against joining the communications workers of America's Wells Fargo Workers United, according to a source familiar with the vote, who declined to be identified discussing personnel matters. According to Reuters, the latest readouts on economic and population trends in China are remarkable highlighting the immense long-term challenges ahead and dragging the growth profile of the world's second-largest economy back to the insular days of the 1970s. Excluding the pandemic shock of 2020, nominal Chinese GDP growth slowed last year to its lowest since Mao Zedong led the country in the mid-1970s, according to some estimates. According to Reuters, the Iran-backed Houthi militia launched two anti-ship ballistic missiles at a U.S.-owned tanker ship late on Thursday that hit the water near the vessel but caused no injuries or damage, the U.S. military said. The incident, the latest amid growing tensions in the Red Sea that have disrupted global trade and raised fears of supply bottlenecks, took place around 9 p.m. Yemen time, according to a U.S. Central Command post on X, formerly called Twitter. According to Bloomberg, Semiconductor stocks from Tokyo Electron Limited to NVIDIA Corp. gained more than $160 billion of market value after Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co.'s outlook for capital spending and revenue lifted hopes of a broad tech recovery in 2024. TSMC's better-than-projected numbers underscored expectations for a bounce back in smartphone, chip and computing demand, following more than a year of post-COVID malaise. On Friday, the world's most valuable chipmaker gained more than 6% in Taipei, its biggest gain in almost a year, after a near 10% climb in the U.S. Key suppliers Tokyo Electron and Adventist Corp. gained more than 5% in Tokyo. According to Reuters, for Chinese businessman Han Changming, disruptions to Red Sea freight are threatening the survival of his trading company in the eastern province of Fujian. Han, who exports Chinese-made cars to Africa and imports off-road vehicles from Europe, told Reuters the cost of shipping a container to Europe had surged to roughly $7,000 from $3,000 in December, when Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi movement escalated attacks on shipping. According to Reuters, Asian shares bounced on Friday, buoyed by a rally in regional chipmakers, while the yen was set to end the week with heavy losses as investors pared back bets the Bank of Japan would soon abandon its uber-easy policies. Oil prices were on edge amid worries about increasing geopolitical risks in the Middle East. The U.S. launched new strikes against Houthi anti ship missiles aimed at the Red Sea on Thursday, and Pakistan conducted strikes inside Iran, two days after Iranian strikes inside Pakistani territory. According to Reuters, Los Angeles Times plans to lay off a significant number of journalists, the newspaper's guild said on Thursday adding that they would organize a one-day walkout on Friday to protest against the planned move. The layoffs could impact at least 100 journalists or about 20% of the newsroom in a move to address the paper's financial pressures, the Los Angeles Times reported separately, citing people familiar with the matter.
According to Reuters, oil prices drifted lower on Friday after a rally the day before, as geopolitical tensions and disruptions in U.S. oil production from a cold blast were countered by concerns over slow demand growth in China. Brent crude futures fell 17 cents, or 0.2 percent, to $78.93 a barrel by 0151 GMT, and U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures slid 3 cents to $74.05. According to Bloomberg, investors are dusting off intervention playbooks once again as a resurgent dollar raises the specter of fresh efforts from officials to protect their currencies. Taiwan's central bank issued a rare statement this week to calm investors after global funds slashed their holdings of the island's stocks and the local currency swooned. A South Korean official told reporters Wednesday the one's weakness is excessive, while China's central bank maintained forceful support for its currency with the daily fixing throughout this week. Speculation is growing that the yen will be next. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average climbed more than 1% on Friday, lifted by chip industry stocks, with the benchmark index headed for a second straight weekly advance. The Nikkei was up 1.6% at 36,034.71, as of 0204 GMT, climbing 1.28% for the week. Earlier in the session, the index rose as high as 36,076.23, closing in on Wednesday's 34-year peak at 36,239.22. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company announced another delay to its $40 billion site in Arizona, dealing a further blow to the Biden administration's plans to boost manufacturing of critical components on U.S. soil. Executives said their second plant in Arizona, whose shell is now being built, will start operations in 2027 or 2028, later than TSMC's prior guidance of 2026. That's after the company in July announced a delay to the first site, now due to start making 4 nanometer chips only in 2025, citing a lack of skilled labor and higher costs. According to Bloomberg, China's largest brokerage has suspended short selling for some clients in mainland markets amid a deepening rout in the nation's stocks, according to people familiar with the matter. State-owned Citic Securities Company has stopped lending stocks to individual investors and raised the requirements for institutional clients earlier this week after so-called window guidance from regulators, said the people, asking not be identified discussing a private matter. According to Bloomberg, Bond traders are growing convinced that U.S. Treasury yields are on the brink of returning to the way they've traded for most of their existence. It's the how, why and when of the normalization that keeps financial markets bouncing around. The shift many investors bet is now underway would see the interest rate on 10-year treasuries rise above those on U.S. two-year notes, a steepening of the so-called yield curve that would mean banks and investors get rewarded for the risk of lending money for longer periods as is typical. According to Bloomberg, a meltdown in Chinese shares is wreaking havoc on the country's asset management sector, pushing mutual fund closures to a five-year high in another sign of waning investor confidence. About 240 local mutual funds were liquidated last year, according to Bloomberg compiled data dating back to 2014. That's the most since 2018, when stricter asset management rules triggered a major industry shakeup. Among the closed funds, four out of five had a stock-focused mandate, which was a record. According to Reuters, Amazon Web Services said on Friday it plans to invest 2.26 trillion yen in Japan by 2027 to expand its cloud computing infrastructure. The Amazon.com unit is spending to expand facilities in the metropolises of Tokyo and Osaka to meet growing customer demand, it said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Houthi militants in Yemen fired missiles at an American-owned commercial vessel on Thursday, the same day President Joe Biden acknowledged U.S. airstrikes have not halted the Red Sea attacks. The Houthis launched two anti-ship ballistic missiles at the Chem Ranger, a Greek-operated tanker, U.S. Central Command said in a statement posted on social media platform X. It was the third such attack in three days. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin slid to the lowest since mid-December as the speculative demand for the token sparked by hype about new exchange-traded funds dissipates, leaving the cryptocurrency in the red since the start of 2024. The largest digital asset briefly flirted with a drop below $40,000 before trading at $41,160 as of 6.30 a.m. Friday in Singapore, 
a decline of 3% in the past 24 hours. Smaller tokens like Ether, Solana and Polkadot also struggled. 